Jeremy Swayman got his payday. The Boston Bruins have their number one goalie. And we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Your Locked On Bruins. Your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Monday, October 7th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine. Free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Before we get started, just noticed Willie's, uh, Willie O'Ree here needs a little boost. And just a reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at Locked NHL Bruins. You can find me, my hockey thoughts, dad jokes, at Ian C. McLaren. On Sunday, our long nightmare is over. One week before Canadian Thanksgiving, we were all giving thanks because word came down that the Boston Bruins and Jeremy Swayman had agreed to an eight-year contract worth $8.25 million per season, $66 total million. There has been some unease over the last week or so following a Boston Bruins press conference where uh, sorry, team president Cam Neely said... Wayman had 64 million reasons to have been with the Bruins already. The tide had been turning in terms of public opinion. And a lot of people were saying, Swayman's asking for too much. This should be done already. At the end of the day, he and his agent, Louis Gross, stuck to their guns and got paid even more than what Cam Neely had cited on Monday And it's my argument that this is for good reason. If you look at the NHL goaltending situation since Jeremy Swayman debuted during the 2021 uh, season, only three goalies with more than 100 appearances have better save percentages than this young man. And those are Linus Olmark, Igor Shosturkin, and Ilya Sorokin. Sorokin signing an identical Uh, contract extension with the New York Islanders with one Vesna Trophy runner-up on his resume. Yes, I mentioned Linus Olmark, and of course the argument is that Jeremy Swayman has yet to prove himself as a 1A, but you can only work with the opportunities that you've been given. And all indications are that Jeremy Swayman is who he has proven to be so far. He was top 10 in goals against average and tied for fifth in save percentage last season among goalies with a minimum of 25 games played. And of course, his big, huge breakout came in the playoffs where he was the uh, league leader in save percentage. Joseph Wall had a slightly better one, but in very limited size, leading the Bruins to a series win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. At every occasion, he has risen to it, and there's every reason to believe that this will indeed be a good contract, both for Jeremy Swayman and the Boston Bruins. Uh, Jeremy Swayman was asked about the back and forth last Monday and whether or not that gave him a kick in the pants to get something done. He said, you can dissect it all you want and think about it, but what's that going to do? We're here now. And he had a plane to catch as he was about to join his Bruins teammates on the plane for a trip to Florida to uh, be there when the Bruins open the season tomorrow night. Um, He has been playing with uh, or skating around with, with some people from BU. He was there every day as soon as camp started. They gave him an oasis to completely escape the outside world. And he ultimately finally agreed to a deal with the Boston Bruins, despite hard feelings that may have come up through the arbitration process, through this negotiation process. 
Swayman said what he knew in his heart was that he wanted to be a Boston Bruin and he was going to do everything he could for his team so that he could be a Bruin his whole career. He said he's excited to be a Boston Bruin. The fact they went through this process and the tools that he picked up throughout, you know, all of that is in the past. All he cares about now is being a Bruin. And the fact that he can do that for eight years and instill himself as a leader, a true member of the city, the community, is all he cares about. And he could not be happier. Don Sweeney, for his part, said he has been pretty consistent in saying that every deal has its own timeline. There's twists, there's turns. You'd hope it's a straight and linear path, but it just doesn't always work that way. You have to be respectful and listen. And part of this whole exercise of going through the negotiation is being willing to listen to what's important to the other party. He was asked about Louis Gross's comments following that disclosure by Cam Neely about the $64 million on the table. And he said that, you know, David Posternock's Contract negotiations went on for a long time. There's ups and downs in these negotiations. He didn't want to get too far into the weeds in terms of um, what could have happened, what uh, Lewis Gross's comments were. He said um, of that, in the spirit of negotiations, there's a range of things when people are talking. Their communication, you know, Gross was always good at advocating for a client. When pushback comes, he's defending his client. But uh, he said, you just have to make sure you're in communication and work through some of those sticky points. He said he was always very comfortable throughout the process with Gross. The narrative is what it was, but that's all he had to say on that. Um, Jeremy Swayman, I should add, was also very open about uh, paying tribute to Johnny Godro and his brother Matthew to begin this. And um, he said about the disclosure on the Amazon Prime series, about thoughts about getting a new deal or being traded. He said he knew in his heart he was going to be in Boston and he was going to do everything he could to stay a Bruin for his whole career. Uh, throughout the process, there's demons that creep in your head. You know, there's a lot of unknowns. This happened to be made public through the Amazon series. But uh, it's a special point when they finally reached an agreement and both sides are intent on making good on the promise of winning a Stanley Cup together. That's, at the end, all that matters. It doesn't matter how we got here. It doesn't matter what the team's initial offer was. It doesn't matter what Swayman's ask was. All that really matters is that he's a Bruin for the next eight years. He's still relatively young. You can say that it's an overpayment for me. He's 25 years old, about to turn 26 in November. These will be the prime years of his career. And with the cap expected to go up, the market set to rise. Well, we'll discuss how I think this contract is going to age well here coming up after the break. If you're looking to get to a Bruins game sometime soon or comedy, theater, concerts near you, there's no better place to turn than Game Time. Game Time is the best ticketing app out there and they have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I love the view from your seat. You know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the venue. And Game Time ticket coverage means your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. What time is it? It's game time, my friends.
Do we have an overpay here for Jeremy Sweeman or will this contract age very well? I'm in the latter camp. I think it's going to age more like a fine wine than that milk sitting in your fridge. Because right now, despite the fact that Jeremy Swayman is a top five paid goalie in the NHL, this is year one by 20, 31, 32. He could very well be and likely will be very underpaid and perhaps even criminally so. All right, Jeremy Swayman has shown the ability to win a playoff series. He outplayed Sergei Bobrovsky in that series against the Florida Panthers, even despite the fact the Bruins lost. He is a big time, big game goalie, and he wants to be a more often than not starter. One of the reasons why the Bruins traded Linus Allmark is because both of those guys, and rightfully so, wanted to be full time starters or what today's NHL looks like in terms of full-time starters. Gone are the days when Martin Brodeur or Dominic Hasek or Patrick Waugh would make like 70 starts in a season. Right now, it's a pretty, not necessarily even split necessarily, but there's more of an even workload among starting goalies and their backups. In fact, uh, last season, the Vesna Trophy winning goalie was uh, Connor Hellebuck. He made 60 starts. He was second or tied for, or sorry, in third behind UC Saros, Alexander Georgiev, who had 64, 63. Those were the only guys above 60 starts. I would expect uh, Swayman to be around 55 to 60 starts with Corbasalo getting uh, the rest. And that would put him in the top five, top 10, Corbis Salo, I should add, had 55 starts last year with an 890 save percentage and a 3.27 goals against average. For the Bruins coming into this season, I had said it before, it would have been borderline disastrous to ride with Corbis Salo and Bussy for any length of time. They need their guy in net. And if you look around the NHL, most teams would happily pay a guy like Jeremy Swayman $8.25 million. Uh, he's got the same cap hit as Ilya Sorokin. He's behind Connor Hellebuck, both of whom, when Sorokin signed his contract extension, he was late 20s. Hellebuck's in his 30s. Vasilevsky, Bobrovsky are growing older and losing their efficacy as well. If you look at the next wave of goalies coming, uh, Igor Shosturkin next summer is... or between now and July 1st, is going to get a boatload of money that will push Swayman down even further on that list of highest pay goalies. Jake Ottinger, all these other guys are going to be paid over the next eight years. Swayman could be outside the top 10 in terms of highest pay goalies by the time that contract expires. And if all goes well, he could be highly decorated by the end of it. Obviously, best case is Vesna trophies, Stanley Cup, maybe even a Conn Smythe trophy. Uh, the Bruins awarded Tuga Rask $7.5 million on a big deal. The next season, he went out and won the Vesna. It's very possible that Swayman could be in that boat this year. If you give him that heavier workload, based on what we know of his abilities, his mentality, his unfazability, his unshakability, the fact that he is out there just enjoying life, making saves, smiling, winking. This guy has the makeup of a true elite level goaltender. And for the Bruins to have uh, muffed this to the point where they had to part ways, that would have been disastrous, especially after having already traded Linus Olmark. So I firmly believe that this deal is going to age well, that Jeremy Swayman is a high-end level goaltender among the best in the game, and that he will uh, play out this deal in a team-friendly manner. Yes, it seems like a lot of money right now, 
especially when you add it to Eunice Corbisalo's $3 million cap hit. They're paying 11.25 between their two goaltenders. Still quite a bit less than the Florida Panthers, who are 14 plus between Bobrovsky and um, Spencer Knight. Ideally, you'd have a cheaper option as your backup. But that just means Eunice Corbasalo has to play well in the games that he comes in so that uh, he is effectively spotting Swayman and giving him the breaks he needs along the way to be most effective when it matters most. Because, yeah, Beznas are great. Regular season success is great. But what really matters, and it's reinforced on that Amazon series, is stepping up in the playoffs. And Jeremy Swayman did that big time against two very talented offensive teams in the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Florida Panthers. So good on the Bruins for, you know, in the end, they realized they just had to pay this guy to get him back in the mix. You could say, yeah, he doesn't maybe belong on the same level as David Pasternak and Charlie McAvoy when it comes to the highest paid players on this team, but he's just as important, if not more than those two, the rest you can kind of put together by committee. You can't really do that when it comes to your starting goalie. And he showed his worth MVP level performance in the first and second rounds of the playoffs. Uh, the scoring is what really failed them. And hopefully they've addressed that enough with their off-season moves to improve the overall team defense and offense to support Jeremy Swayman. But I don't think this is an overpay at all. And near the end of the deal, it's quite possible and likely that he will be drastically underpaid if all continues. Now, of course, eight years, who knows what's going to happen over the ne next eight years. Uh, could he completely fall off? And it's a albatross of a contract, maybe, but we have four seasons of a sample size and one playoff run where he was the guy to suggest that he is indeed uh, the man in net for the Boston Bruins and one of the best goalies in the NHL, period. I'm not really, you can doubt it. You can say, this could blow up in their face and maybe who, who knows there's no way to predict goaltending is one of the weirder positions in hockey. You don't know what is going to, to happen, but um, it's a safe, it's as safe of a bet as any. Um, if they could get rid of Corpus Salo's $3 million contract, that would be great. I think that's the more egregious thing here. Paying a starter 8.5 or 8.25 is fine. Having that $3 million for a backup who's coming off the worst contract or the worst season of his career, that's probably a bit more problematic. But hopefully goalie coach Bob Essensek can work his magic there and make him serviceable to the point maybe where they can, they can deal him and call up a Brandon Bussey or a Michael DiPietro from the AHL. That is if Bussey is still in the organization after today. And we'll discuss why that could be a possibility as the podcast continues. Did you enjoy this weekend's football action? Well, you could have made it even better by getting $200 in bonus bets from FanDuel. That's right. FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book, is offering you $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the Sunday afternoon action, you can check the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You can also take a look at the Bruins futures, go to their uh, over under for total team points this season set at 97.5. Maybe with Swayman officially in the mix, you're confident in the over. Put $5 down, get that $200 in bonus bets, which is guaranteed the moment you place that $5 bet. It's all available at fanduel.com, America's number one sports book.
With that Jeremy Swayman contract taken care of, the Bruins got down to further business, solidifying their opening night roster and put several players on waivers here on uh, on Sunday, all of whom will either clear or be claimed prior to 2 p.m. here on uh, on Monday. And among those players put on waivers were two goaltenders, uh, Brandon Bussey, who needs waivers to be assigned to the AHL, as well as uh, Yuri Patera, who was recently claimed from the Vancouver Canucks. And there's a good chance that he will be reclaimed by Vancouver and assigned to their AHL team. Now, Bussey is a very interesting case. He has not really impressed much in the preseason, but of course he's been one of the better AHL goalies over the past couple of years. And it's a real possibility that he could be uh, scooped off the waiver wire. So the Bruins could lose two goalies here in, uh, in the course of today. That would leave them with Michael DiPietro and Casimir Kaskasuo, who is still on that PTO. Uh, after signing, um, after signing Jeremy Swayman and pending the assignments of a few guys who are also put on waivers, uh, Billy Sweezy, uh, Jeffrey Veal, and Patrick Brown. I believe the Bruins will have about. Um, one point something in available cap space. Let me just bring up Puffpedia here because I know they had a tweet about it uh, yesterday. or And they said, with the signing of Swayman, the Bruins have 387 in projected cap space with 23 active players. Uh, Patera being waived, Bussy being waived, uh, the other three guys sent down as well. They could have around 1.16 million in available cap space, and that would give them the space needed to sign uh, Tyler Johnson, who remains on the PTO. At that point, they would have pretty much have their roster set for this season. So that's something to keep an eye on here this afternoon. Who is claimed and um, whether the Bruins then announced the signing of Tyler Johnson. The X account Bruins cap space uh, put it well as well on uh, Sunday. There's a good diagram here. Let's assume Zaka, Lindholm, Pasternak on the top line, Marshawn, Coyle, Geeky, Jones, Patra, Frederick, Beecher, Kostelik, Brazo, and then Tyler Johnson remains on the PTO. And then you have Zadorov, McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo, Lorai, Peak, Witherspoon as your extra defenseman. So that's 13 forwards, seven defensemen, two goalies with 1.96 remaining in available cap space. So they would only have 22 players out of a possible 23 on the roster with 13 forwards, seven defensemen, two goalies. And some of that 1.96 would have to go to Tyler Johnson. So depending on what they pay him, they could keep up a guy on a entry level deal or near the league minimum. Uh, but we'll assess all that on tomorrow's podcast when waiver decisions are confirmed. Maybe they scoop a guy off waivers. Maybe they lose all these guys on waivers. Maybe they don't. Who knows? We'll have to see exactly what's going to happen. But that's the situation at the moment. Um, it's a bit tight. Don Sweeney probably wants a bit more wiggle room, but if you add Johnson at, say, 900000 you have a million and a bit left. At the end of the day, the most important thing was getting Jeremy Swayman signed. I cannot overemphasize his importance to this team. People kept saying it didn't matter who was in net for the Bruins this season because of their team defense. I need to remind you once again that they were regularly outshot last season, out-attempted, and their expected goals were under 50%. What kept them afloat was a 
team save percentage that was third ranked in the NHL behind only Winnipeg and Florida, I believe. With Lena's Allmark gone, pressure will be on Jeremy Swayman to carry the load over 55 plus games. And I believe he's very much up to that task. The drop off to Eunice Corbisalo could be steep if he does not refine his game. And having Corbisalo and Bussy playing together for an extended period of time would have been problematic to say the least, and perhaps playoff chance reducing by a drastic number. Swayman, Corbisalo, serviceable. Ideally, they move Corbisalo at some point and bring a cheaper option in to, again, People say you can only play one goalie in the playoffs. It's very true. I'd prefer to pay a serviceable black up near the minimum and then allocate those funds to defense or offense. But this is where it is now. They had to bring Corbisalo in to trade Allmark. They got Kostelik, who's a good depth forward, bringing some physicality and that first round pick that was used for Dean Letourneau. The hockey hugs officially over. Jeremy Swayman is the man in net. And I'm excited to see how he grows into this contract and outperforms it by, well, perhaps as early as this season. If he wins the Vesna, making 8.25, if he's even a finalist, making 8.25. Remember, Sorokin got his deal after finishing as runner up to Linus Allmark, and he's three, four years older. So you get four pre. 30 years from Swayman. He stays consistent. Those post 30 years should be excellent value as well. So all in all, a nice piece of business. Yes, Swayman and Gross stuck to their guns. Didn't get as much as they wanted, but by all accounts, the Bruins came up quite a bit from their original offer as well. Yeah. You can make your argument about that, whether that was disrespectful, irresponsible, perhaps further alienating Swayman. But they, at the end of the day, what's most important is they got a deal done. Swayman is a Bruin for the next eight years. And a core of Swayman, McAvoy, Pasternak, uh, most teams around the NHL would envy that trio. And uh, the Bruins are in good hands with that trio moving forward. There's lots to be excited about this team this season, even more so than last year, I believe, coming into it. Some new faces, um, some core players taking on bigger roles. And on tomorrow's episode, we will do a full season preview. What to expect from this team here in 2024-25. I'm very excited for the puck to drop tomorrow night against the Florida Panthers. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen, friends. Please do subscribe on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube if you have not already. Check out Locked On NHL next. Hey, yours truly makes an appearance there today, talking to Gil Martin about the Swayman contract, so get some more insights there. And please do take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great week. We'll talk to you again here on the next episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.